I've got a new topic runway to land my plane today. Hey, any ideas about anti-colon esterases? Yeah, the drugs that inhibit acetylcholine esterase. What's the essence? What's the mechanism? And what's the effect? Let's sew it all into a sensible fabric. Welcome all to Is Pharmacology Difficult podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Radhika Vijay, MBBS MD Pharmacology, and this is the audio hub to get the best simplified basic tips, strategies, methods, and lots of ideas to learn better, understand better, and make your concepts crystal clear. If you really find, and if there's a question hovering in your minds, Is Pharmacology Difficult? Lend me your ears for a while and let in the magic of knowledge. Let's break the ice today with the topic of the introduction to anti-colon esterases. It's a new desired description of the inhibitors of the enzyme acetylcholine esterase or to simply designate them by the name anti-colon esterases and these act indirectly, hence they are also termed as indirectly acting cholinomimetics or indirectly acting parasympathomimetics. A good reminder is that acetylcholine is very short-acting drug, especially when in the synaptic cleft it hardly lasts to exhibit any significant response clinically and the reason will be unfolded in today's narration. Hold your ears high and listen to me. Acetylcholine very quickly undergoes hydrolysis through acetylcholine esterase. Now, For your utter information, there are other esterases found in the various tissues, especially plasma, and they are non-specific as concerned with acetylcholine because they hydrolyze many variety of esters like cocaine, procaine, succinamethonium, bambuterol, etc. And that is why they are termed as pseudocholine esterases. That's a new term, but that's a very relatable and associated term with true colon esterases that we designate in our discussion today as acetylcholine esterase. I hope you got this concept nicely. Now, if we get to find the drugs which halt this action of hydrolysis of acetylcholine via acetylcholine esterase, then we can actually increase the life and the responsiveness of acetylcholine. At different receptors, these receptors can be muscarinic or nicotinic in nature. And as we get to find these drugs that halt the hydrolysis of acetylcholine, what we are heading up to acetylcholine in such a way is naturally allowed to accumulate and not degrade it its effects they are significant in central nervous system neuromuscular junction ganglia blood vessel walls now let me tell you one thing more very nice and very important in the blood vessel walls acetylcholine is playing a paracrine function What do you mean by saying paracrine function? It means the action is restricted locally and is not concerned with the nervous system or the nerve endings at all. Got it? In our today's discussion, we are talking about indirectly acting drugs. That is, they have no action on the denervated organs. As in the denervated organs, no acetylcholine release occurs in the synapse. Right? And that was an easy concept. Now just ponder over what's exactly happening. Acetylcholine responses, they are powered both in vitro and in vivo. 
A structural glance reveals the derivation of anticholine esterases from either phosphoric or carbamic acid. Hence, they are either organophosphates or carbamates or they can be simply non-carbamates when they have no derivation from any of these at all. Hope you're knowing that we are heading towards the classification of anticholine esterases. Okay, so no delay in this wonderful endeavor. Structural disparity differentiates the anticholine esterases. They can be reversible in their nature or they can be irreversible. The reversible ones are in fact competitive inhibitors. I'm actually creating a good amount of curiosity amongst you all to know the names of these reversible inhibitors of acetylcholine esterase. Well, to your other fact, they can be of two kinds. Either they are derivatives of carbamic acid or they are simply non-derivatives. The former they are referred to as carbamates while the latter they are referred to as non-carbamates. And broadly, we can divide the reversible acetylcholine esterase inhibitors as intermediate acting or short acting drugs. The details will be conveyed along with the details of the individual drugs that is later on. Amongst the derivative of the carbamic acids, they are included physostigmine, neostigmine, rivastigmine, peridostigmine, while the non-derivatives, that is non-carbamates, they are tacrine, donopezil, edrophonium, and galantamine. All these drugs named so far, they structurally resemble acetylcholine. Now let me quickly brief out some common features of these reversible anticholine esterases in the form of bullet points. 1. Poor absorption of these drugs occur from most of the sites like conjunctiva, lungs, etc. But physostigmine is quite well absorbed as compared to the other drugs. Let's go over to the second point. Ultimate effects resemble directly acting cholinergic agonists. Third point. Main target sites of these drugs, they are skeletal muscles, eye, neuromuscular junction, gastrointestinal tract, urinary tract, respiratory tract, heart, etc. Fourth point. These drugs, they form important medlines for treating some important ailments like myasthenia gravis, glaucoma, neuromuscular block reversal, atropine poisoning and they are also used to increase the motility of gastrointestinal tract and the urinary tract. Okay, these were the common features. Next, let's comprehend the mechanisms effectively. Now for this, we should be aware of the fact that all these drugs, they bind to the anionic site as well as the esteratic site of the acetylcholine esterase enzyme. And then what we get is a complex. The complex so formed, it is less susceptible to hydrolysis as compared to the complex of acetylcholine esterase along with acetylcholine. So we can say that the complex of acetylcholine esterase along with these drugs, that is anticholine esterases, now this complex is quite stable. In other way, the enzyme acetylcholine esterase is effectively inhibited and it takes more time to regenerate. What do you infer by all this info blast? We get to know that acetylcholine in the synapse, it acts for a longer duration of time. All in all, our purpose is solved. Now one exception here is edrophonium and tacri. Now these two drugs, they bind only at the anionic site. They are not binding with the covalent bonds, they are binding with the weak hydrogen bonds. And because of this thing, they are forming a degradable complex, which is very unstable and is very short acting. So they quickly get free from the acetylcholine esterase 
and this whole process is diffusion there is no hydrolysis happening and hydrophonium is rapidly eliminated by the kidney after the detachment from acetylcholine esterase now this was the end point and that makes up my key points for the day before i plan up to meet for the next episode i just want to say identify your wise to your motivation one positive thought is the key to inspiration tweak a bit to approach the target don't lose your mind just one step will work up the rest wow that was a quick push of motivation for the day hope it sets your endeavors in motion if they are static till date for all the updates and latest episodes of my podcast do visit www.spharmacologydifficult.com where you can also sign up for a free monthly e-newsletter of mine it actually contains a lot of updates about medical sciences drug information updates and my podcast updates also you can follow me on different social media handles like twitter insta facebook and linkedin they all are with the same name is pharmacology difficult if you are listening for the first time do subscribe and follow whatever platform you are consuming this episode Stay tuned. Do rate and review on iTunes Apple Podcast. Stay safe, stay happy, stay enlightened. Thank you.